and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'll be making two cards using the some of the club kits from this month. I've got, I'm starting with the large die of the month and I mentioned during my unboxing video that I thought maybe you could cleverly kind of snip away certain parts of this gorgeous die cut to cut it down to size for a smaller card. And so that's what I'm going to do today. My card base is going to be a four by six card folded. And I happen to get a lot of these pre-made card bases from Crafters Companion box kits and Spellbinders box kits. But um, the Spellbinders kits generally have USA two size card cards, which are four and a quarter by five and a half. And the Crafters Companion box kits generally have four by six card bases. And I thought the four by six was a better ratio of card uh, for this particular frame size. So what I did was traced around some solid color blue cardstock so that I could get a rough outline of this die cut because the one large die will cut out everything. So all um, the gorgeous intricate detail as well as the outside cutting edge. So I just traced around that border and hand cut it myself, which doesn't have to be a perfect cut. So whenever I do something like that, I always sort of cut inside my pencil line a little bit and that way uh, less of that paper is going to show uh, on the outside. And what's included in this, um, the large die of the month is these set of three, um, I guess they're the kaleidoscope style of a uh, flower die where you can die cut out of different colored cardstock and then stack them or layer them up to get this really fun, um, beautiful look to them. And if you caught my uh, flip video, I actually use that same flower die and die cut out of foam to create stamps. And it makes for beautiful layered stamps as well. Um, the card I made in my flip video using the large die of the month, that that might have been, it's up there. It might have been my favorite card out of uh, the five that I made for that video. But here I'm also adding the second floral um, set of dies. So you get two size of flowers and their centers as well. And I kind of like offsetting them a little bit so that some of the black from um, the entire frame is showing as if it was a little bit of a shadow. So I didn't try too hard to line it up, but do keep in mind that for both of these flower shapes, the petals aren't identical, which I think is fantastic because it looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more realistic that way. But that means you may have to rotate it a little bit to find that exact match. And I wanted the leaves to be green. So I just um, found some scrap green cardstock and it's in these little pieces like um, you're seeing on my cutting mat here because I, I just placed some green cardstock on the die where the leaves were instead of die cutting the entire design out of green because I didn't I knew I wouldn't need you know a green um, <laughs> uh, an entire die cut of green I just wanted these little pieces that fall out in order to inlay them back into this project and so that's one way to kind of save yourself a little bit of cardstock is if you ever want to inlay a color back in, you don't have to do the full die cut, just, you know, uh, place the cardstock where you want it. And I do see that I have a bit of green that's missing and I did lose some footage there. Uh, so what you didn't see me doing is I pulled out my pastels, which are from Jean Davenport. I think you can still get these in the Spellbinder shop. And I just, um, you know, applied some pastels all the way around the border so that softens the edge a little bit better and I just lucked out that I happen to have a um, pastel color that matched my um, blue cardstock perfectly 
And so um, I added a sentiment right over my missing leaf and that finished up that card. So now I'm into um, my second card, which features the small die of the month. And I'll just show you how I assembled the bunny rabbit because I realized in my flip video, I didn't actually show this part. And so you do get um, the bunny's face and I like to just put colored cardstock behind it to get color for the eyes and the nose. You have two ear shapes and then two um, shapes that are sort of the inner ear, which I've die cut out of pink. And then you get the body and legs of your bunny and there's a separate die for the, uh, the tummy of the bunny as well. And I cut, I cut that out of the same pink. And I've made a bunch of bunnies just like that without any arms and I set them aside because the um, die set actually includes two different options for arms. So you can have um, the arms where the bunny is holding something and you have the, the left arm um, and the right arm. And you also have the option of um, the bunny's arms just being kind of, um, actually, you can position it in any way you want. So you could have them down by the bunny's body or uh, upwards as if it was waving. So uh, lots of flexibility with how you want your bunny to kind of express himself or herself. So um, the bunny could be holding something or it can be just, you know, waving or just hanging out. So I am inking up this background as um, just a messy, cloudy sky background. And the uh, die set, which you can see off to the left there, also includes three different balloon shapes. And so I'm going to just create this um, cluster of balloons that my bunny is going to be um, floating on, or I guess will be keeping my bunny afloat. <laughs> and the the die set is so fantastic because this um, these balloon strings also do a little bit of double duty. So you can use them as balloon strings or you can use them as sort of um, the chain or the rope that holds a, um, a swing um, that you can also create a uh, kind of another swinging mechanism um, which if you want to see an example of, you can check out my flip video. I'll link to it in the upper right hand corner because I keep referencing it. And if you haven't seen it, um, that'll be an easy way for you to pop on over and I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video as well. But this particular die set, the um, interactive mechanism is this really fun, really easy to do swinging element. So I duck it twice, the, um, the actual swinging interactive piece, which is that circle and uh, the bar going across it. And in the center there, you um, can already see I put a foam dot. Now I happen to have uh, these foam circles that are very, very dimensional. They're pretty thick. And I thought those would be perfect for um, for the swinging element because it's going to be nice and dimensional, but it'll have um, this nice smooth area for this swinging element to uh, rotate back and forth. Of course, I think you could probably use a square um, piece of foam as well. I don't think it has to be circular, but uh, because I have the circular foam, I'm using it. And I'm just going to create this... Um, bunch of balloons here and I'm, I'm being careful to try to make sure that all of the balloon strings come to a single point at the bottom there and that way um, there is a, a logical location for where the bunny is going to hold all of these balloons and the die set does also come with a small circle die which you can um, use to cap off that um, small piece of foam that goes inside of your interactive mechanism because that interactive mechanism needs to, it needs to be free floating. It needs to swing back and forth. So you want to make sure that your foam doesn't actually, um, isn't sticky and doesn't attach to anything um, 
else really and so um so that's why i just added that little um piece of uh, circle die cut over top of it and now it's just a matter of um, arranging everything else on my card so this die set also comes with um, two cloud shapes and so I like to apply those or adhere those to my card such that they um, run right off the edge I think it makes it look a little bit more um, organic that way and I I didn't like that frontmost green uh, balloon because I wanted it to look in front of everything else and the way that I had it um, ordered it it didn't quite look that way <laughs> and so I just die cut that same balloon again and um, glued it right over top but you can see how easy how fun this interactive card is and here's a final look at the two cards that um, I made in this video Hopefully, um, if you haven't already checked it out, this video is part of a club hop. So I'll leave a link to my blog post so that you can check out um, all of the other amazing inspiration using this month's club kits. Um, have fun and hopefully you enjoyed this video and all of the other videos along this hop. Thanks so much and until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!